my life. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I thank God for that. Thank God for His grace and His mercy.
I needed that today. I needed that. Jesus came to the place. Can I say the place? Place. He looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must stay at your house. Get a word of blessing to the reading of this word and give us a house. All right, now. Amen. Amen. You can see it in the presence of God. Just look at your neighbor. Say, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. As this chapter begins, we find the Lord passing through Jericho. Jericho was a wealthy and a very important town. It actually was a winter resort for King Herod. And it was home to a lot of wealthy people. It doesn't say exactly why Jesus was passing in Jericho. But we do know that God goes wherever he wants to go. Can I get a witness? Yeah. So in our text this morning, we see three different reasons why Jesus passed through Jericho. And so here this morning, we start with the person. Somebody say the person. The person. It is here we find a man named Zacchaeus who was the chief tax collector in the region. It's ironic that his name means pure or righteous one. But he was anything but pure in his life. As a publican, he would have to pay Rome a stated amount for a certain territory in which he would gather taxes. He scouted the finances from the people through the collection of taxes, taking much more than what was required by Rome. Amen. Amen. You ever been cheated on? Mm -hmm. This made him wealthy. 
and hated by the people. Zacchaeus was the leader among the republic, among Republicans, among the publicans. Amen. <laughs> he had given up his religion because the Jews would have rejected him because of the way he lived his life. So he had no more access to the temple. He had drifted far away from the Lord. And Zacchaeus basically had everything he wanted materially, but spiritually, he was bankrupt. Amen. Amen. I mean, no, it's not about how much stuff you have. All right. Amen. Come on. It is very possible that he was the publican that prayed near the temple. You know that prayer, Lord, be merciful to me, a son. Because Luke tells us that he sought to see Jesus. Zacchaeus' efforts to see the Lord were futile. He couldn't seem to make that happen. You see, as Jesus was passing through Jericho, there were so many people that blocked his view of Jesus because the Bible said he was short in stature. Amen. Imagine him, if you will, trying to pry his way through the crowd so that he could just get a glimpse of Jesus. But he was blocked in every direction. Nobody would let him through. Remember now, these people did not like him at all. See, when you cheat folk, and man, after a while, you're going to start having some folk look at you funny. All right. People are going to get tired of you. Can I get a witness? Can you see him trying to hop up? And down. Or trying to climb on something like a rock to get a peek at Jesus. In the process, he might have been stepped on, shoved, elbowed in the face. No matter what he tried to do, he could not break through the mob to see Jesus. And there's a lesson there, my brothers and sisters. There's a lesson right here. Many times, the crowd of this world will hinder you from seeing Jesus. Can I get a right yeah. Yeah. Some will get in your way. Right. Others will intimidate you, right. embarrass you, try to embarrass you, or mock you, yeah. and mock your desires to know Christ or to serve him. Can I get a right But my, my, my answer to you, right, uh, is to go right on ahead and seek the Lord, no matter what folk try to do to stop you. Right, right now. Right now. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Call upon him while he is near. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm not going to let my shortness, can I get a witness, stop me from seeing the Lord. Amen. I didn't come to see you uh, in particular. I came to see Jesus. Can I get a witness? And sometimes you have to press your way in order to see the Lord. Zacchaeus was a man that was spiritually thirsty. And he was going to the right person to get it quenched. Isaiah 55 and 1 says, Everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, Come ye, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come on to Jesus, amen. And don't let anybody stop you from coming to the Lord. Amen. You don't have to have money to come to Jesus. Can amen. I get a witness? You don't have to have a whole lot of money in your bank account to come to Jesus. Amen. You just need a bowed down heart. Amen. And a humble spirit. Can I get a witness? Lord. To come to the Lord. He'll take you, amen, where man won't take you. Amen. And I'm not going to let nothing separate me from the love of Jesus. Amen. There's something this man has that I need. Amen. And Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And right now, the person here in our text, actually it's two people, two persons. One is Zacchaeus, Another person is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just those two. 
You see, when you need something from the Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, it ain't about a lot of people, amen, in it, amen. It comes down to you and the Lord. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that I can talk to him and call on him late in the midnight hour. We can go one-on-one, -on -one, amen, and every now and then I need to have a little talk with Jesus. There's something he has that I need, amen, and you got to quiet sometimes everybody away from you. You can be in a room full of people, can I get a witness, and still it seems like there's nobody there but two persons, you and the Lord. So we start with the person, but we move now to the position. The position. See, there are four lessons that we want to lift up here. First of all, in order to get closer to the Lord or know Him better, you may have to change your position. All right, now. Right. In order to see Him better, right. you may have to change your position. Right. Zacchaeus. Realize his desire will not be fulfilled to see Jesus unless there was a change in his life and a change in position. Yeah. In this case, he had to go to higher ground. Somebody say higher ground. Higher ground. Higher ground. And the same is true for people. Sometimes there has to be a change in your position. Can I get a witness? Amen. There may have to be a change in your location such as a job or the location of your home. Amen. Sometimes your position of where you are is not allowing you to see the Lord the way he wants you to see him. But you got to be willing to change your position. Somebody say shift. Yeah. Right. And the reason why some people can't see him, because they're not willing to shift from where they were. If where you are now is not allowing you or is blocking your relationship with God, you need to change your position. Yeah, Come on, Amen. There may need to be a change in the people that you're around. Come on now. That might be hindering you That's right. from knowing the Lord. It could be family or friends. Sure you're right. It could be a spouse. Sure you're right. Come on. You may need to distance yourself from those friends that are a bad influence upon you by adopting higher ground, higher standards for yourself. Look at somebody say, move on up a little higher. And, and the thing about it, when you move on up a little higher, people gonna try to call you arrogant. They gonna try to say, you think you're better than me now? Can I get a witness? I don't think I'm better than you, but I needed to change my position so that I could see the Lord a little bit better. Come on here, somebody give God praise. Secondly, Amen. if you want to get closer to the Lord and know him, you have to position yourself where you'll find him. All right, now. Can I get a witness? Come on, come on. Some of you have found yourself in positions where the Lord ain't moving. Can I get a witness? And you're stuck right there, amen, because you refuse to shift to the place where you can act where he can find you. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but if I know that, if I find out that Jesus is passing through Jericho, I'm going to Jericho. Can I get a I need to go and be where he is. And I thank God, amen, for that mind that I can change up every now and then. You might have to change up and get to a position where he can, you'll find him. Can I get All right. Zacchaeus placed himself on the path where Jesus would pass. And sometimes we find ourselves looking for Jesus in the places that Jesus has left the building. Can I get a word? And if you don't catch this new shift right now with what God is doing, he's resetting the church, amen? And he's saying, I ain't passing through that way. I passed through that way before, but I'm passing through this way now. Can I get a window? And you might be still stuck in the past and where God passed years ago, amen? But he's passing over here now. But you've got to be willing, amen, to shift from where you were, to shift from where he is. I want to be where he is. And I want to be in the movement of God. Can I get a window? We need to do the same thing in a similar manner, my brothers and sisters, like Zacchaeus did. You need to be a good path. And I'll tell you what a good path is. Mm -hmm. A 
good path is the way to the church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about a path to the body of Christ. Come on, come on. You are the church. Yes, yes. I understand when people say we're going to church. Yes. But really, you are the church. Come on, come on. So what you are doing, you're bringing the church to a different location. Can I get a witness? Come on now. This building is not the church. That's right. That's right. This is a building. That's right. That's right. Can I get a witness? That's right. That's right. We are the church. And sometimes we put more emphasis on the building than we do the people. Sometimes we love the building more than we love the people. So God right now, he's resetting the church and he's saying, now you see me, now you don't. I'm over here now. So you have to put yourself in the path and you also have to put yourself in the path to the word. Yeah. Beloved, the fellowship of a wonderful Believers and Bible preaching, the fellowship and getting to Bible, good Bible preaching, will do wonders for you if you would listen to it and apply it. That's what the Sunday school lesson was all about today. Mm -hmm. A path to the Word. Right. Mm -hmm. But what good would it do you just to get to the Word, mm -hmm. hear the Word, Come on. and not do the Word? Come on. Can I hear what and so God is positioning Zacchaeus, amen, because of Zacchaeus' willingness to get in the path of the movement of God. Can I get a witness? And I have a question to you for you today. Are you in the path of the movement of God? Or are you just going and traveling and going to and fro based on your emotions or based on what somebody said? Can I get a witness? Are you in the move of God? Come on, come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. See, it will increase your faith when you find that right path. Yeah. The path of righteousness. It will increase your faith and it will help you to grow closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, as Zacchaeus humbled himself by running and climbing a sycamore tree mm -hmm. to get close to Jesus, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord, just like Zacchaeus did. If we have the attitude, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need your understanding. Forgive my failures and weaknesses. Teach me to do your will. That kind of attitude, beloved, will draw us closer to him. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. And the psalmist said, the Lord is near unto them, nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Yes. And he saves such as be of a contract spirit. James said, but he giveth more grace, wherein he saith, God resists the proud, but gives more grace to the humble." Amen. James says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Thank you, Lord. And a fourth lesson that we will note is the fact that we're all like the chaos. Yeah. Amen. He was a short man of little stature. Amen. Amen. But we're short too. Mm -hmm. uh, you talking about preaching? You 6'3. What are you talking about? No, no, no. Paul put it this way For all have sinned. And falling short. Look at somebody say, Yeah, you short. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little short too, hey right, man. Every time I turn around, I come up. I can't do it by myself. I come up short. Can I get a witness? My righteousness is like filthy rags. I'm just a little short. Can I get a witness? Why should I judge other short people when I'm short myself? Look at somebody say, yeah, you short. Hey, Amen. I know you thought you were tall, but you were a little short, and I'm short too. So we just do a little short, short little people. We'll just bring our little short. To a, a, ourselves to a tall God. Can I get a witness? A big God, a great God. Can I get a witness? We are all short before a mighty God. God's standard of righteousness is too high for us to attain on our own. That's why we need Christ's salvation and his forgiveness. Before we judge Zacchaeus, 
from being short. We all fall short of the glory of God. Can I get a witness? Yes. Doesn't it look crazy for a midget or small person to call another midget, another small person short? <laughs> Don't it look foolish? If you ever saw that comment, if you ever saw two short people, two midgets arguing on the street, and one is just calling them short, other one say, you short. Other one say, you short. Doesn't that, does that make sense? <laughs> well, then does it make sense for a, 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 a believer to call another believer a sinner when we're all sinners saved by grace? That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yes. When I was growing up in the, in the projects, amen, we didn't have a lot. Anybody, anybody? Oh, yeah. Get with that. Can you understand that? We didn't have a lot. We had a lot, but we didn't have a lot. All right, now, come on. And so they used to give out this government food. Thank you, Jesus. It was that government cheese. Thank you, Lord. Maybe y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, Lord. Lord knows. They, 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 Mama made some of the oh, best grilled <laughs> cheese sandwich from that, we used to call it government. From that government cheese. Yeah, that, that government butter. Yeah. That government peanut butter. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And everybody that lived in the project was low income. Yeah. Come on. That's right. And everybody would go down to the little station with our little shopping carts That's right. and get that food. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Can I get a word? Thank you. Now, here's how it's crazy it is. Sometimes on the playground, when we playing, we all playing on the playground in the project, somebody would call another person poor, and y'all ain't got nothing. That was odd to me, because I saw y'all, your family, going down there and getting that government cheese, and government butter, and government peanut butter. I saw y'all getting it too. That's right. In other words, look, we're all in the same projects. You're, you don't, you, you qualify because you have low income. So what good would it be for one person that's there to call another person like they're poor and they ain't got nothing when none of us really didn't have anything? That's what qualified us to go down there and get the government food. I used to be proud, amen, because that food was good. Come on, God, I got a minute. And we needed a little help. We needed a little help. But mama would take that food and make something real special. Amen. Can I get a witness? I ain't had no problem eating it at home. Amen. But I'm going to look like God. I don't need God when I get out to the playground because I want people to think better of me. The devil is a liar. What am I saying? I'm here today because God has helped me. Can I get a witness? I'm standing today because God has helped me. And I am not ashamed of the help that God has given me. Thank you, Lord. How you going to be ashamed of the Lord? When you, when, look where the Lord has brought you from. How you going to be ashamed to let people know that you serve the Lord? Well, there was nobody but the Lord who brought you out. I know you got a car and a job and a, and a house right now. But it wasn't always like that. Can I get a witness? But the goodness the Lord. I'm gonna tell somebody that was nobody but the Lord. Amen. Yeah. You don't know where I came from. If you only knew where I grew up, can I get a witness? We didn't have a lot, but we made it. Huh? Mama made sure we had what we need. Can I get a witness? We had handed down clothes. Mama was so patches in our bridges, but we made it. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody here today who's not ashamed to let the world know where he brought you from? Huh? Can I get a witness? Don't forget where he brought you from. I know you hired. But don't forget that you was a little short at one time in your life. Don't judge other short people. Because you short too. We all fall short. And even now and then, not any of us have arrived. Can I get a witness? I know Zacchaeus has been doing some bad things, but we've all done some things that we weren't supposed to do. Can I get a witness? I know Zacchaeus, people don't like him. 
because of his lifestyle, amen. But you know, some people don't like you because of your lifestyle. Huh? But God ain't worried about none of that. Because we move from the person to uh, from the position to finally the presence. Yeah, yeah. The presence. Thank you, Lord. Zacchaeus thought he was seeking Jesus. But Jesus was seeking him. Jesus came through Jericho just. Can I get a witness? Yes. For Zacchaeus. And he came so that he could do something with Zacchaeus that everybody can see and realize how merciful, how full of grace Jesus really is. He came to see Zacchaeus. And he was going to use Zacchaeus for his glory. He was going to, through Zacchaeus, show the world why he came. He came to save people that were short. Y'all looking at me physically. We all fall short of the glory of God. And so if we were going to be reconciled yeah. back to God, yeah. we needed somebody yeah. who can look beyond our shortness and see our need. You got so many people looking at your shortness. What you how you don't add up. Some of you have been the black sheep in your family. Some of you have always been talked about. Can I get a word? Put down. Can I get a word? But let me tell you today, let me free you up, amen, from the opinions of other people. It don't matter what other people say about you. If they ain't got a heaven and a hell to put you in, I'm short. But what they don't realize is you're short too, amen. And what you need to do is look at your shortness and find your way to Jesus so that he can bless you indeed. Can I get a witness? And I got a reason to praise him. Because one day he came to my Jericho, just where I was, and he looked down on me, and he picked me up, and he turned me around. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody here that's been short all their lives? But God came in, and he set me on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just imagine. As he looked down from that sycamore tree on the approaching crowd that was following Jesus, the fire of excitement had to be burning in his veins as the Lord was walking closer and closer. I'm sure his heart was beating like the way how good Bob Jeremy played on the drums. Amen. I bet his heart was good. Your heart ever been like that? When you realize that God yeah. is drawing near to you. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you realize that in his presence there's fullness of joy. Yeah. And you be like, that is what I've been lacking all of my life. I've been yeah. lacking his presence. Yeah. I didn't think that I was good enough for his presence. Can I get a witness? But I thought that if I could just climb the tree high enough, maybe I could just get a glimpse of him. Can I get a glimpse? And, 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 and when the Lord looked up at Zacchaeus, fear must have gripped his heart. Oh, Lord, I've been discovered. I've been exposed. God now knows my sin. God now knows how I keep on making the same mistakes. God now knows, amen, amen. that I fall short. Yeah. Yes. But I'm here to tell you that uh, he might have wondered what's going to happen now. The Lord has seen me as I am. How I many of you know that God sees you just as you are? Yeah. 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 He knows all about you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He knows where you fall short. He knows your shortcomings. Yeah. He knows your weaknesses. Yeah. 
He knows all about you. Yeah. But he did not come to condemn you. You might wonder, is he going to condemn me? Is he even going to kill me? You know, like everybody else has done to me. Jesus eases any fear that he may have had, as Zacchaeus may have had, by calling him by his name. All right. All right. Come on, get ready to close. I'm going to yeah. move out of here. Mm -hmm. He knew Zacchaeus by the way. Mm -hmm. He knows you too. All right. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Just as the Lord saw Zacchaeus, he sees every one of us yes, yes. in our dark and hidden places. Mm -hmm. He knows the man that is seeking him. Yeah. Watch this. Jesus commanded him to quickly come down. He said, make haste and come down. Mm -hmm. He said, because he needed to stay in his house that day. In fact, he said, I must stay. This is very interesting because it is the only place in the four Gospels where Jesus goes to be a guest in a home even though he was not invited to that home. All right, now. I believe Jesus knew the yearning in the heart of Zacchaeus. And in fact, the fact he Jesus knew the, how much Zacchaeus needed the Lord. So down he came from the tree. And by now, everybody was watching him come down. He may have been embarrassing for Zacchaeus, but he didn't care. Jesus was coming to his home. Right. And there is a repeated lesson here, my brothers and sisters, for us to have close relationship with the Lord. Sometimes we need to come down from our tree, our place of security, our refuge, just like Zacchaeus. Instead of trusting in ourselves and in our ability for our money, we need to humble ourselves and trust in the Lord. I got a question for you today. Are you willing to come down? All the people saw this and they began to muddle. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Don't they know what doesn't Jesus know? What kind of man Zacchaeus is? But I'm here to tell you that he knows exactly what kind of man that Zacchaeus is. And, and I'm so glad that he knows everything about me, but he loves me anyhow. I'm so glad that he don't mind coming to my house. And sometimes my house is a little dirty. Can I get a witness? Sometimes I got stuff cluttered all around my house. But Jesus doesn't judge us because of the condition of your house. Because when he steps into your house, everything will be all right. When he steps into your home, they will be all right. What you need to do is say, Lord, come into this house. I know it ain't right, but come into this house. I know I don't do everything right, but come into this house. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come into my house. That guy stood up. And said to the Lord, He said, Lord, here now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Lord, the Son of Man, came to seek and save that which was lost. And I'm so glad that he knows my name. Did you know that he knows your name? Oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. I'm walking with Jesus. Me and my little short self. He's telling me he loves me. And I'm telling him I love him. He's on his way to my house. Don't he tell me coming to my house. Can I get away with this? I'm so glad that he's coming to my house. He knows your name. He knows all about you. 
but he's willing to come to your house. I don't know about anybody here, but when he came to my house, everything changed. My position, my person, because in his presence was my strength. Yeah. Yeah. In his presence was my breakthrough. Come on. And if you keep listening to people telling you, um, reminding you that you're short and you're a sinner, you'll never find you. Because God didn't come to Jericho because of how good Zacchaeus is. He came because he knew that Zacchaeus and all of his shortness and all of his sin was searching for the Lord. And the church has got like those people who have said, oh, don't he know who, what kind of man he's going, he's going to his house? Jesus said, that's why I came. All right. To save come on. that which was lost. Yeah. And so I want somebody to be freed up today like Zacchaeus. Yeah. Come down, man. Yeah. Come down. Humble yourself. Yeah. And in due season, He'll lift you up. Does he know your name? And know how he walks with me? And know how he talks with me? And know how he tells me? That I am his own. He knows my name. You know my name. Come on, everybody, all over the door. You know my name.